Greetings of the day. I Asha K, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Sai Vidya Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Going to present in today's class Digital Signal Processor Algorithms and Architecture for the seventh semester elective course. Let us discuss about the Module Five topics. Module Five basically consists of Introduction, Memory Space Organization. external bus interfacing signals memory interface concept parallel input output interface with the dsp processor programmed input output interrupts input output and also dynamic memory access we'll discuss one by one in the series of videos in this particular uh, video we're going to discuss about the module 5 uh, the first concepts that is introduction and also we are going to discuss about the memory space organization and external bus interfacing signals used in the dsp processor tms 320 c54xx family let us learn in the introduction what why we require interfacing in the dsp processor see processor uh, is the main core of the digital signal processing so this particular digital signal processing will have the dsp processor see since many input devices and output devices will be manufactured by the different manufacturers interfacing with this dsp processor is very very important along with this we also require program memory data memory external Uh, on chip program memory and data memory is also available with the dsp processor whenever required external memories we are going to use in such cases interfacing concept is very very important here a typical dsp system with external memory input output devices are shown in this particular figure 1 and here the manufacturers of the memories and input output devices are not same as that of the manufacturer of the dsp dsp may be manufactured by dectos instrument motorola a dsp devices so here maybe the input devices output devices may be manufactured by some other manufacturers there are variety of memory and input output devices available the signals generated by dsp may not suit memory and input output devices to be connected to the dsp processor in such cases we need an interfacing device an interfacing devices are very important necessary to setting up the communication with the uh, memories and the dsp processor so this is the main uh, basic idea behind the uh, module that is uh, we have here is the dsp with uh, interfacing now we will discuss about the memory space organization how the memory is organized in tms 320c54xx processor it consists of 192k words of memory space of 16 bits each the memory is divided into program memory data memory and input output space each are of size 64k words the actual memory and the type of the memory depends on the particular dsp devices of the family here the program memory and data memory can comprise both internal that is on chip as well as external or also called as off chip memories the figure shows the internal memory and interfacing of external memory memory that is divided into program and data will be having a program memory and data memory internal memory and along with that we will be having arithmetic logical unit multiply and accumulator unit barrel shifter all those things and we also have an off chip that is external memory this is on chip internal memory so this is the memory space organization of tms 320 c54xx processor so in case of uh, c54xx processor on chip memory depending upon what type of dsp processor we are having the on chip program memory can be a read only memory or a single axis uh, ram or a dual axis ram or combination of these memories can be used here 
one set of address bus and data bus is available in case of SA RAM and two sets of address bus and data bus is available in case of dual access RAM. Figure 3 shows the single access RAM and dual access RAM of the DSP uh, processor. So this is about the single access RAM and this is about the dual access RAM. And here the DSP can thus access two memory locations simultaneously using the dual access RAM. Memory space organization. As we all know that the memory space organization consists of program bus and data bus that is program memory and as well as the data memory. Those are present on the chip of the DSP processor. The number of operations in single memory access is three reads and one write operation. The external memory to DSP can be interfaced with here we'll be having 23 address lines and 16 data lines and interfacing signals are generated by the DSP refers to external memory. For example, for the TMS processor, we have 16K ROM and 64K DA RAM, 64K SA RAM as the memory. Extended external program memory is interfaced with 23 address lines that will be having 8192K different locations. The external memory is thus divided into 128 pages with 64K words per page. The 128 pages starts from page 0 to page 127. The program memory has 128 different pages and in that each of size is 64k words. Page 0 is called as the basic 128k space and pages 1 to 127 are extended pages. In this page 0 which has a 64k word size among that 4k words are called as on chip read only memory and remaining pages uh, and also the remaining space in page 0 and remaining pages from 1 to 127 are extended and they consists of that is single axis RAM and dual axis RAM. The 4K on chip ROM space mainly contains the following. One is global system for mobile communication enhanced full rate speech codec table which is very important in the speech processing of the speech signal. And next one is a bootloader information will also be present in this ROM. A mu law and a law expansion table which are used in compression algorithms are also present. A sign lookup table is included in the ROM and an interrupt vector table is also present on the ROM. In the memory mapped register, we have a register called as processor mode status register. This processor mode status register is one of the memory mapped register available in the TMS 320 54XX processor. This in this processor mode, we have a three bits. These three bits are used for the purpose of on chip memory mapping. The three bits we will discuss in detail. We have a first bit called as microprocessor bar microcomputer mode bit. If this bit is zero means the on chip ROM is enabled and addressable. If this bit is one means the on chip ROM is not available. Second bit we have here is OVLY. It implies RAM overlay. It enables on-chip DRAM data memory blocks to be map mapped into the program space. If this bit is zero, here what happens? The on-chip RAM is addressable in data space but not in the program space. Since we have both uh, different spaces, if it is one, we'll be having on-chip RAM mapped into the program and as well as the data space. 
and we also have the third bit which is called as the DROM bit. It enables on chip DA RAM that is bit number 4 to 7 to be mapped into the data space. If this bit is 0, the on chip DA RAM 4 to 7 is not mapped into the data space and if this bit is 1, it is mapped into the data space. These three bits are very very important in mapping the uh, data onto the chip. The memory map for the TMS320C54XX processor. So this is the uh, diagram which is showing the page 0 program. This is page 0 program. This is page 0 program. How that page 0 program is divided. Here for the microprocessor and microcontroller bit mode is equal to 1 means we will be having uh, first from 000 to 007F which is reserved when OVLY bit is equal to 1, RAM overlay bit is equal to 1. If it is uh, like OVLY bit is equal to 0 means it is external. When we have 0080 to 7FFF, so here on chip DA RAM 0 to 3 bit is used when OVL y is equal to 1 and external when OVLY is equal to 0 and this is also from 8000 to FF7F is external and we have FF80 to FFFF is interrupt external. Similarly if you just observe microprocessor mic bar microcomputer mode bit is equal to 0 means the external what we had here in this particular space from BFFFF to C000 uh, we have again here on chip RAM. This on chip RAM is of 16K into each of 16 bit. So this is uh, the one thing which is extra when microcomputer mode bit that is microprocessor bar microcomputer mode bit is equal to 0. And here uh, we have shown here uh, in case of uh, the memory mapped concept uh, like what are all the information are available on the chip say from 000 to uh, FFFFH first from 000 to 005F we will be having the memory mapped registers and from 0060 to 007F we will be having the scratch pad memory details and from 80 to 7FFH we will be having the on chip DA RAM uh, that is 0 to 3 bit which is of 32K into 16 bit A each and 8000 to FFFFF will be having the on chip DRAM 4 to 7 that is DROM is equal to 1 and when DROM is equal to 0 it is external. And here the addressing range for on chip DRAM in data memory are given. So this is the uh, address ranges we will be having from 80 to 1 FFFFH. Uh, and till the last one that DRAM7 we will be having here it is E000H to FFFH. The extended pages that is from page 1 to page 127 are shown in this particular figure. The extended memory map of TMS320546X processor. Depending upon the MP bar MC bit and the RAM overlay bit and also uh, the DA RAM bit we will be having the following details for page 1 and uh, this is page 2 and this is page 3 similarly we will be having up to page 127 and these are the address ranges for uh, dual access RAM and these are the address ranges for the single access RAM. If you just observe here dual access RAM uh, we have here it is from 018000H to 01 9 FFFFH. Uh, similarly, uh, we have here it is 4, 5, 6, 7 only, and SERAM we have here it is from uh, 0 to 7, 8 different SERAM uh, data memory program memory locations are given here. And this is uh, one program memory, program memory, uh, uh, different program memory locations. How the hexadecimal value is split here that is uh, shown in this particular uh, table. On chip DRAM 0 to 3 bit when OVLY bit is equal to 1, external when OVLY bit is equal to 0. And on chip it is enabled when MP bar MC bit is equal to 0 
and external when mp bar mc bit is equal to 1 similarly we have here for single axis ram when this particular bit is equal to 0 and when this mp bar mc bit is equal to 1 we have again in the page 3 on chip sa ram purpose and it is 4 to 7 we have here that is with the page 0 after page 3 if you just observe page 4 page 5 page 6 up to page 127 the lower part of the memory it is external so we have only in the beginning page 1 page 2 page 3 spaces for the dual axis ram and the single axis ram so this is the memory map organization of tms 320c54xx processor now we'll discuss about the external bus interfacing signals the processor uh, has 16 external bus interfacing signals the signal is characterized as a single bit that is single line or multiple bits that is multiple line bus it can be synchronous or asynchronous with respect to clock the signal can be active low or active high it can be an output signal or an input signal the signal carrying line or lines can be unidirectional or bidirectional signals the characteristics of the signal depend on the purpose it serves the signals available in tms 320 xx are listed in the table which is explained now we will discuss about the external bus interfacing signals of tms 320 c54xx processor we have the first one that is 20 bis address bus a0 to a19 signal and d0 to d15 are called as the 16 bit data bus data bus is bidirectional whereas address bus is unidirectional we have the next one called as data space select program space select and input output space select these are uh, an active low signals and they are active during the entire operation of data memory program memory and input output reference we have the next one called as read write bar that is read write signal whenever it is active high uh, whenever it is the dsp processor is performing the read operation and it is low when it is performing the write operation we have uh, two strobe signals one is called as the memory strobe signal and the next one is called as the input output strobe signal and these two strobe signals are active low signal they remain low during the entire read and write operation of the memory and input output operations next we have here is the ready which is called as data ready signal it is used when the processor is interfaced with the slow device we have the next one called as hold request and hold acknowledge these are used with direct memory access controller we have the next one called as micro state complete bit which is used in the dsp processor we have two interrupt related signals one is interrupt request and another one is interrupt acknowledge and these two are active low signals and interrupt request typically for used for data exchange and between the uh, like analog to digital converters and other processors tms 320 c54xx processor has 14 hardware interrupts which are used for the purpose of user interrupt multi-channeled buffered serial ports and also data memory access and also for the timer operations and direct memory access purpose also we use this interrupts we have the next bit 15 bit which is called as external flag bit which is an active i bit and it is used with uh, synchronous outgoing control signal we have an active low branch control input this branch control input is asynchronous incoming control signal whereas xf we have external flag it is an outgoing control signal whereas branch control is an incoming control signal uh, low signal on this makes the dsp to respond and attend to the peripheral devices so this completes the external bus interfacing signals 
in summary in this video we have learned two concept one is memory space organization and another one is external bus interfacing signals to prepare the content in this particular presentation the textbook referred is this and the reference books referred are the following thank you all